we can start. <coughs> Today, Tarika has said that she can't join because she's traveling. I wonder where she is traveling. <laughs> Enjoying traveling. <coughs> okay, so we have to read as an inner equality increases. So we will read that and then we will see what, or rather, maybe I can first tell you what we have said in the earlier para first and then we start reading. Okay. <coughs> I see that um, Yasmin has not yet joined. <coughs> maybe she is <coughs> she's still in her mother's home. All right, so I am reading out the summary of what he has said in the earlier paragraph. Okay, so this silent witness self at level two, that is the spiritual planes of consciousness. What's in the described is four planes. This silent witness self at level two of the spiritual planes is not enough for the integral yoga. It may be enough for the others because in that silent witness self, you normally have don't enough, you don't have enough power to change things in the physical world. Your body mind life remains imperfect. In fact, it continues with its old habits of whatever habits were there, good or bad, they all continue. And you don't have much you can because you are only a witness. You are only silently watching without judging or without trying and things. Trying implies effort and there is no effort in a witness. He is only watching. So, the silent witness self at level two of the spiritual planes is not enough for the integral yoga. This, the static silent self, the static silent self makes available to the sadhana the instrumentation the possibility of going farther in the ascending spiritual journey. Once you have reached a certain stage, you can always go farther up. And it becomes easier to go farther up if you have reached the silent witness self. Possibility of going farther up in the ascending spiritual journey. But still, there remains the actual effective use of this instrumentation for governance and mastery of the lower nature. The lower nature your body, mind, life, which continues to remain imperfect with all its old habits. Maybe to a certain extent you can change, but not enough at all. Okay. So what are the instruments that are now available at level two, which were not available at level one? They are peace, calm, silence, detachment. These into these four things are the what allow you to go even further up. Because if there's no peace, you can't do anything. If there's no calm and no silence and detachment, because an attachment is a chain that binds you to what you are attached. So if detachment is there, you can climb without any problem. There's no rope tying you down to the ground level. These constitute a vast field ready to be plowed planted and harvested with the yield of mastery with power and bliss. Okay, so this is the, <coughs> with these things you can, he is using an agricultural uh, image, okay. You can plow, you can plant and you can harvest. And what, what will be the result? Yield, yield will be mastery with power and bliss. So he is saying that the possibility of going to the third level where power is available for changing the lowest level, level one, is available even at level two. But you have to take the advantage and go up. It is so satisfying, level two, that you don't want to go up normally. You are very satisfied with what you have. Okay, so that's what he said. At this stage, the emergence of the psychic being becomes crucial with its innate capacity to purify, lead correctly along the right path. The psychic being guides and directs the sadhak infallibly, though it may not control and master the lower nature, because that is not its role. The 
that's exactly what we were discussing with Yasmin. She is not there now, but she was saying that psychic being can give the liberation. No, it can't. Normally, it does not give liberation. Liberation is only when you go vertically up into the self. If you go horizontally into your psychic being, or rather the psychic being comes out into your outer nature, then you have purification and correction and guidance, but no liberation. The lower nature of body, life and mind, revolving endlessly in its own ignorance, can now be guided to exit the level one of the ignorance and darkness. So this is what the psychic being can do. It allows you to more easily go up to the level two. And that's exactly why Sri Ramana says, first get the psychic being, that's the first step, into your outer nature. Then it's easier to climb up. And also safe, huh, by the way. It's very, very safe. Because climbing up without the psychic experience can be dangerous also. These stairs are not built properly and you may fall. The psychic being has determined orientation. It has got these capacities. Determined orientation. There is a strong will to purify and reach the divine. Determined orientation. Soul instinct. The instinct automatically knows what should do and what should not do. What one should do. Psychic tact. Psychic intelligence, tact, skillfulness. Insight into true substance. Approach to spiritual vision. Okay. This is also something very, very striking in the psychic being. You start getting visions. It may be in sleep in your when you are dreaming, but all the one can get tremendous guidance in your dream images. So that's what he's saying. Approach to psychic vision, spiritual vision. Sorry, knowledge by inner contact and even identification may be possible in the psychic comes forward. If the psychic comes forward, the lower vital gets reoriented, gets rid of confusion, replaces artificial mental constructed rules by soul's inner insight. But the psychic being's most profound contribution is for the sense of sacrifice, surrender, offering, consecration. These are the things that the psychic being is most skillfully and most profitably giving to the body-mind life. The lower life yearns for the higher life when the psyche comes forward. Every smallest act becomes a means of climbing out of the finite into the infinite. So this is what we have said in the earlier paragraph. Now we can start reading as an inner equality increases. So, <clears throat> oh, Yasmin also has come on the scene. Good morning, Yasmin. So we can start reading. Today, Arjuna Ji, you will start if you have the text. Yes, okay, then after that, Kiran can continue today. Kiran has not read for a long time. Okay, Arjuna Ji, start. As an inner equality, as an inner equality increases, and and with it the sense of the true vital being waiting for the greater direction it has to serve. As the psychic call increases in all the members of our nature, that to which the call is addressed begins to reveal itself, descends to take possession of the life and its energies, and fills them with the height, intimacy, vastness of its presence and its purpose. In many, if not most, it manifests something of itself, even before the equality and the open psychic urge or guidance are there. A call, a call of the veiled psychic element, oppressed by the mass of the outer ignorance and crying for deliverance, a stress of eager meditation and seeking for knowledge, a longing of the heart, a passionate will, ignorant yet, but sincere, may break the lid that shuts off the higher from the lower nature and open the floodgates. A little of the divine presence, person may reveal itself or some light, power, bliss, love out of the infinite. This may be a momentary revelation, a flash or a brief lived gleam that soon withdraws and waits for the preparation of the nature. But also it may repeat itself, grow, endure. 
a long and large comprehensive working will then have begun, sometimes luminous or intense, sometimes slow and obscure. A divine power comes in front at times and leads and compels or instructs and enlightens. At others, it withdraws into the background and seems to leave the being to its own resources. All that is ignorant, obscure, perverted, or simply imperfect and inferior in the being is raised up, perhaps what brought to its acne, dealt with, corrected, exhausted, shown its own disastrous results, compelled to call for its own cessation or transformation or expe expelled as worthless or incorrigible from the nature. This cannot be a smooth and even process. Alternations there are of day and night, illumination and darkness, calm and construction, or battle and upheaval. The presence of the growing divine consciousness and its absence, heights of hope and abysses of despair, the clasp of the beloved and the anguish of its absence, the overwhelming invasion, the compelling deceit, the fierce opposition, the, disab the disab disabling mockery of hostile powers, or the help and comfort and communion of the gods and the divine messages. A great and long revolution and churning of the ocean of life with strong emergence of its nectar and its poison is enforced till all is ready and the increasing descent, fi descent finds a being, a nature prepared and conditioned for its complete rule and its all encompassing presence. But if the quality and the psychic light and will are also there, then this process, though it cannot be dispensed with, can still be much lightened and facilitated. It will be rid of its worst danger, an inner calm, happiness, confidence will, uh, confidence will support the steps to all the difficulties and trials of the transformation and the growing force, profiting by the full ascent of the nature, will rapidly diminish and eliminate the power of the opposing forces. A sure guidance and protection will be present throughout, sometimes standing in front, sometimes working behind the way, and the power of the end will be already there in the beginning and in the long middle stages of the interior. For, all, for at all times, the seeker will be aware of the divine guide and protection or the working of the Supreme Mother Force. He will know that all is done for the best, the progress assured, the victory inevitable. In either case, the process is the same and unavoidable a taking up of the whole nature, of the whole life, of the internal and of the external, to reveal and handle and transform its forces and their movements under the pressure of a divine life from above, until all here has been possessed by greater spiritual powers and made an instrumentation of a spiritual action and a divine purpose. Very big para, but beautiful description of how this psychic being can help you. Okay, so this is it. So we'll read each thing and see the use of words. That's the awesome part. So, just told you earlier in the period which we read just now that no, that we uh, the summary which I gave you before that the psychic being when it comes forward, it makes it much easier for the sadhaka to climb to the level two. He can more easily because there will. No attachment, no ego, all these things will start disappearing. So I start reading the beginning of the paragraph that we read today. As an inner equality increases, and with it the sense of the true vital being, waiting for the greater direction it has to serve, and the sentence very last, so I'll go step by step. I'll take up first the inner equality. Note the word inner equality. Outward equality may not still be there. Outward equality means your, you may continue to get upset with things. You may continue to enthuse and become very happy when someone you know, praises you or when someone um, gives you a gift or whatever, or you get good fortune, you are happy. Okay? Some, the happiness can be in so many degrees. They start jumping and uh, howling and a very quiet happiness also is there. But he is talking first of the inner equality. In your, 
you suddenly you will find that you are getting depressed because something bad has happened. But then something inside you will tell you, wait, 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 don't be so disturbed. That is the increasing of the inner equality. So an inner equality can become perfect even when the outer is still not so perfect. That can happen. As an inner equality increases and with it, the sense of the true vital, the true vital is the <clears throat> pranamaya purusha inside you, behind the outer vital. Okay? <clears throat> Because the psychic has come forward, and when the psychic has come forward, then the true vital starts showing itself. Very, very good emotions and no wrong thoughts. Just one minute, my phone is ringing, huh? just one minute. Ah, sorry for the interruption. Uh, there was an important uh, thing to be told to Munna. Okay. So, we continue. All right? So, then, so he's saying, that the, when the psyche comes forward, an inner equality starts increasing and the true vital being comes up. And the true vital being can give you also a lot of energy. Okay? You will be able to work like anything. So, waiting for the greater direction it has to serve, as the psyche call to increases in all the members of our nature. So, it is easiest for the psychic influence to increase the mind first and then uh, in the vital, because the true vital has come up also, your energy level also goes up and you can force your even the body to do work which you would never have been able to do before. That is what he's saying. Then all the members of our nature, mind, life and body, everything becomes more oriented towards the psyche. That to which the call is addressed, look at that. Because somebody may ask for mother's help, somebody may ask for Sirendra's help, somebody may ask for both, somebody ask for Ganesh, somebody will ask for mm, something else, okay, Ramana Maharshi. So he's, that's why he uses the word that, okay. That to which the call is addressed begins to reveal itself. Slowly, slowly, you see the guidance is helping you, okay. You can clearly see the guidance. That to which the call is addressed begins to reveal itself, descends to take possession of the life and its energies and fills them with a height. Height means nobility, intimacy, intimacy, love, vastness of its presence and its purpose. In many, if not most, it manifests something of itself even before the equality and the open psychic urge or guidance are there. So it can happen. So I'm saying in many, if not most, so it's not uncommon at all, that you get an experience first showing you that this is possible. All experiences, spiritual experiences, give you the idea that this is the potential which you have to develop. Okay? It may be an aspect of power, it may be an aspect of love, it may be an aspect of ananda, anything. It can be so many things. So in, in many, if not most, it manifests something of itself even before the equality and the open psychic urge or guidance are there. A call of the veiled psychic element oppressed by the mass of the outer ignorance and crying for deliverance. A stress of eager meditation and seeking for knowledge. A longing of the heart. A passionate will, ignorant yet sincere, may break the lid that shuts off that higher from this lower nature. So, look at me, what he's saying, the crying for deliverance and eager meditation. I know of people, when the psychic had arisen, in the middle of the night, they used to get up and sit up in bed, wanting to meditate. So, it's not unusual for that to happen. Eager, a stress, there's a stress, a pressure on you to eager meditation and seeking for knowledge. I know of this person who, when they, this uh, happened, they were just a touch happened, he gave mother a list of all the books he wanted to share those. <laughs> you know, I say on the Gita, Sentence, Life Divine, okay? these three books he asked for, and mother sent immediately those books to the person concerned. <laughs> okay? A call of the veiled psychic element oppressed by the mass of the outer ignorance and crying for deliverance. Okay? A stress of eager meditation and seeking for every 
word, every phrase that she is using is actually can, can be experienced. Eager meditation, I told you, in the middle of the night, you get up and sit up in bed, wanting to meditate, <laughs> seeking for knowledge. Okay, that's exactly what you want knowledge. So you send a list to mother. Mother, give me these books. I want knowledge. Yeah. A longing of the heart, a passionate will, ignorant yet but sincere. Ignorant yet still ignorant, but sincere may break the lid that shuts off the higher from the lower nature. Which is that lid? If you remember, the this the uh, the line that separates the normal mind from the higher mind. When you go into the higher mind, the lid is broken, and you go up, and you get peace and calm and the witness self okay, in the higher mind, which is the lowest of the level two. Level two lowest is higher mind, but that's enough to get a glimpse of the witness self. This may be a momentary revelation. Note the word. Every sentence of Swamiji is so clear. This may be a momentary revelation. I think I told you once that someone experienced this in the nursing home for about two three hours. Okay, so <laughs> when um, I had gone to see the person. That person told me today I had a very interesting experience, and before that, she was very disturbed. Very disturbed. Oh, I don't want to hear. This is not okay. I'm having trouble and all the sort of thing. But that day, he said that I'm absolutely calm and quiet, and I have absolutely everything in the physical world has no importance at all. There is absolutely nothing. I'm in utter peace. So and nothing matters to me now. So I asked, how long did this last? He said about three hours, two three hours, and slowly the experience disappears. Now read that sentence. This may be a momentary revelation, okay? A flash, a flash, or a brief lip gleam that soon withdraws. And why does it withdraw? Because the imperfection and the impurity in the lower nature is still not it. Ready, not gone, and wait for the preparation of the nature. And what is the preparation of the nature? Purification, lack of attachment, reduction of ego and desire. These are the preparation that needs to be done. But also, it may repeat itself, grow, endure. A long and large and comprehensive working will then have begun. And this comprehensive working, you will be able to feel it in your mind. Your ideas are beginning to change. You are in the vital. Maybe the desires are becoming less. The attachments are becoming less. May not disappear entirely, but becoming less. Sometimes luminous or intense it depends on the person. Sometimes slow and obscure. A divine power comes in front at times and leads and compels or instructs and enlightens. Guidance is there. At others. It withdraws into the background and seems to leave the being to its own resources. This is also reminiscent of the uh, magnificent writing, the hour of God. Okay. If you remember, if you remember to read it, uh, you will see that exactly what he is saying here happens. Sometimes you get tremendous guidance. Sometimes you are left to your own devices. You are own left to your uh, whatever capacity you have. You have to and that is very often referred to as the, the night of the soul. You have to manage with whatever you have, but you must remember that the guidance is always there. You must not feel that um, that uh, you have been abandoned by the divine. And the next two three sentences will explain to you why these difficulties come up. We should not. Uh, we should, normally there is an ambitious interpretation. Oh, I have lost that magnificent attitude that I had. Now I am a most ordinary person. I have fallen back. I have not succeeded. You may feel like that, but Shanta is going to explain to you why that happens. Okay, all that is ignorant, obscure, perverted, or simply imperfect and inferior in the being is raised up, perhaps brought to its acme. Maximum amount of problems come up to you. You will dealt with, corrected, exhausted, shown its own disastrous results. 
compelled to call for its own cessation or transformation or expelled as worthless or incorrigible from the nature. So all these difficulties come up for transformation. It's like the imperfection is coming up and saying, get rid of me. <laughs> or even if it doesn't say that, you understand, your mind understands. For instance, if you have got some strong desire for something, whether it be uh, an object or an aim in life or a, a purpose, whatever, that will keep coming up again and again. And then you realize, oh, this weakness is still there in me. I have to get rid of it. So that's what Henry is saying. When the weaknesses and the difficulties increase, you must take that as a mother says that very clearly. She says that the divine grace is coming to you. <laughs> the divine grace gives you problems so that you know what your problems are and you, the divine is showing you what your problems are. You mustn't think in the opposite way that <laughs> I have fallen back into my old habit. That's not it. The divine is helping you. Of course, all this is uh, true for everybody. Everybody who has difficulties should not view them as difficulties but as opportunities. That's the whole thing. Very difficult to do that, but if you can do that, you will benefit like anything. So, and then he's saying, this cannot be a smooth or even process. Even process. Even means without ups and downs. The word even can be interpreted so many ways. No? So, this cannot be smooth and even process. It's, a, it's not a level ground. It goes up and down. Alternations, there are day and night. Illumination and darkness. Okay? Calm and construction or battle and aptitude. All these things are sadhak has to face. The presence of the divine, growing divine consciousness and its absence. So sometimes you feel the divine is there helping you. Sometimes you feel there is nobody to help you. Heights of hope and abysses of despair, the clasp of the beloved and the anguish of its absence. Okay? The overwhelming invasion, the compelling deceit, the fierce opposition, the disabling mockery of hostile powers, or the help and comfort and communion of the gods and divine messengers. Sometimes the gods are also helping you. Okay, divine messengers. And these divine messengers are there everywhere. In the mental world, in the spiritual world, even in the supernatural world, they are all there, the divine messengers. And there are many types. Okay? For instance, you know, i just give you one or two examples. Take Indra. He has got many assistants. Okay? And this is real. Huh? Yama, for instance. Yama has got many assistants who come and take the soul when the death occurs. Sometimes Yama himself does not come, but he sends his messengers. Okay? So they are there. Then there is the uh, Kubera. Kubera is the god of wealth. Okay? He has also got many attendants. Shiva has got so many attendants. So these are the divine messengers. And, they send. Okay, so. and a great and long evolution and churning of the portion of life with strong emergence of its nectar and its poison. Very clearly, he is giving you the image of the Samudra Mantra. Okay? And it can be a vast thing. The Samudra Mantra is very interesting if you remember. No? So, when, what is the Samudra Mantra? They, you are at an individual level. It is all the dirt that is there in you is being churned so that it comes up. The churning is exactly like the churning of uh, uh, the, the heat, okay? <laughs> you put uh, 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 the curds into a water and then go on churning, the butter comes up. Here is the butter that comes up. That is the, uh, that is the nectar. But there are also all sorts of other things also that can come up in the Samudra Mantra. Okay, so the nectar and the poison. The story goes on, but we certainly is only using the small image of the Samudra Mantra is enforced till all is ready and the increasing descent finds a being, a nature prepared and conditioned for its complete rule and its all-encompassing presence. By the way, the Samadhi Mantan image is wonderful. Na? It's an ocean. 
the vast universal ocean then big churn and the churning is done by uh, the <coughs> the the churning stick is uh, the biggest mountain in the world <laughs> so it, it means to say that at an individual level also churning happens but even at the universal level the churning is happening and what is that it is evolution at the universal level there is evolution right? so that's a churning is going on all the time okay. so and a very good example of the churning now is after the superman has descended the utter confusion and the um, the terrorism that is occurring everywhere that's all the poison coming out is being coming out and one day much of it will be hopefully disappear okay all encompassing presence i read the next sentence the sentence text is very very uh, brief he is just saying emergence of nectar and poison we have to know that he is talking about the image okay. but if the equality and the psychic light and will are already there then this process though it cannot be dispensed with one has to go through trouble and difficulties can still be much lightened and facilitated this is what said the mean by the sunlit path so if you have the psychic being which has come forward then your path whatever the difficulties you accept very easily and there is no great sorrow there is a little bit of a depression maybe but you know that this is coming because it is necessary for you it becomes a sunlit path okay i think you all familiar with the idea na of the sunlit path the sunlit path can come to a person in whom the psychic has come forward into the outer nature that's the sunlit path that's what he's talking about here it will be rid of its worst dangers that's one of the biggest advantages of the psychic emergence worst dangers are not there anymore in the psychic because it, it tells you what is going to happen and what is, what you should do there is tremendous guidance when the psychic comes out and inner calm happiness confidence will support the steps through all the difficulties and trials of the transformation and the growing force profiting by the full ascent of the nature the full ascent of nature okay? ascent a s s e n t huh? not a s c n t not the climbing but the agreement the harmony of the nature the nature is agreeing fully to cooperate with the psyche rapidly diminish all the problems diminish and eliminate the power of the opposing forces a sure guidance and protection will be present throughout sometimes standing in front very very clearly sometimes working behind the veil and the power of the end will be already there even in the beginning and in the long middle stages of the great endeavor what is the great endeavor your yoga <laughs> for at all times the seeker will be aware of the divine guide and protector or the working of the supreme mother force i just stop here because he, you will be aware of the divine guide and protector and even without the uh, good example i can give you of this is the <laughs> swambo chose churchill okay for his instrument in the second world war and he was guiding churchill and churchill was a very very outward oriented person and very unpleasant person also but he felt that someone is guiding him he declared that in parliament also so we will be aware of the divine guide and protector in the working okay so he was not even doing yoga or maybe let's do positive statement i should not say that because i don't know <laughs> but he felt the guidance okay that's why i mentioned it. and it is a huge work he had to do and he did that that's why i'm mentioning it so many people will be feeling the guidance but in his case it was very crucial for world history he will know that all is done for the best the progress assured the victory inevitable when the psychic comes forward you are sure of your victory but 
you don't know the time factor. This is what Sharanga mentions in the in the um, in the uh, record of yoga. He says that there is tremendous faith that I will succeed, but as to when I will succeed, there is a little bit of a doubt. <laughs> so that is exactly what he means. The mother also says that she says that I am being asked to work, but I am not being told anything about when it will be because you remember the. Fruit of the work is not yours. Karman neva adhikar is a ma palesu kadachan. The pala is to God, not to you. So even mother, okay, because she is divine, and yet at the same time there is a human element in her making the effort. She is not being told what the result will be. It's there in the agenda in the notes you'll show me. Okay, notes on the way. He says that I am not being told. <laughs> so. He will know that all is done for the best. Is that a, a lower level around when the psychic comes on? The progress assured, the victory inevitable. In either case, the process is the same, unavoidable. A taking up of the whole nature, of the whole life, of the internal and the external, to reveal and handle and transform its forces and their movements under the pressure. Of a diviner life from above, diviner life. So already what you have, you have to go even more divine. Until all here has been possessed by greater spiritual powers and made an instrumentation of the spiritual action and a divine purpose, your body mind life also become much much purer than what you had before. But the total purity can come only at the level three. So even at level two. The purpose, the divine purpose, can start having effects. So now we can. How much time do we have? Oh, we have gone far beyond our time. I'm sorry, but it was such a beautiful uh, para that uh, I got carried away. I've gone. Uh, well, actually, this is supposed to be eight forty, so we are not really late. <laughs> anyway, so the description of the. Psychic being coming forward and helping you and making your journey absolutely safe, because as Shankar says in one place, everything in yoga is dangerous except the psychic emergence. So that makes it absolutely clear. Dangerous because you can be misled and you can, if you are prematurely climbing too high, you will fall. All these things are possible. No, because we are in ignorance. We don't know where we are going. So get the psychic forward. That's the step number one in the interior yoga. And how do you do that? By devotion, by love of the divine, by remembrance and constant offering, sacrifice. That's the way. Okay. So we stop now, and next time we will read to be read in this process. So he is there. And she is well not down. Yes, I will make a note. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bonjour. Bonjour, dear Rangada, and all. Thank you, Rangada. Thank you, Rangada. All you want. Thank you. Bye bye.